Hey guys, we're in Chicago at Shuba's Tavern. Uh, we're here for arguments and grievances. It's like zero degrees outside, so let's go and meet the producers. Nice. How are ya? Doing great, Mike. We're with uh, Zach Peterson, Kevin Brody, and Goodrich Gavart of Arguments and Grievances. Um, along with Kevin White, you guys produce the show. Mm -hmm. How long has the show been going on? We've been doing it here for about two years. Two years? Where was it before? Uh, it started in St. Louis at a, a bar called Brennan's. It was created by the man who owned and ran the bar. The bar is no longer around, mm -hmm. or the show isn't around. One of the two. Mm -hmm. The man we think is still around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys weren't there at its inception? No, no. Kevin White was, and so was Kevin O'Brien. Kevin O'Brien runs the show in Denver that's been along that's been around longer than our show. Oh, wow. Uh, do you guys know where the idea came from? No. No <laughs> You guys, how's it going tonight? Give it up for yourselves for coming out to the show. Well, what this show is, is a comedy debate show wherein comedians uh, and other funny people get together and they argue things no one should really be arguing about. Now, we're not talking about mortgages, we're not talking about debt crisis. We're talking about goofy stuff, and hey, we're having a lot of fun doing it. Okay? Um, all right, you guys ready for your first debate? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> all right, you guys know everything you need to know about Gilligan's Island. <laughs> No question. <laughs> I love it. The show was on for three seasons. And over that period of time, 78 people showed up on the island. <laughs> <laughs> and left. The whole show of Lost, to me, is like an emotionally abusive relationship where you're just like, am I crazy? Did that fucking happen? <laughs> no, that never happened. I think it happened. <laughs> a tribe leader from another island shows up and he wants a bride, so they dress up Gilligan as a woman. <laughs> End of series. <laughs> Your friends are like, maybe you should find a different show to watch. You're like, you don't get it like I get it. It's a very tense thing. An evil dude uh, comes to the island and he has a bunch of robots. And the only way that they can stop him from his evil plans is that the Harlem Globetrotters have to beat these robots in a game of basketball. Okay, so we got robots fighting bass, playing basketball. This is fun. <laughs> I was so confused sitting back here because he's saying it and I'm just like, God damn, this is good. <laughs> what the fuck is this doing? <sighs> I'm just getting very frustrated with this whole that this is even a debate. Boss is a piece of shit. <laughs> They were going to make one more movie, but they actually bailed on the plans. The plot of it was going to be that the people from Gilligan's Island got married to each other. So the professor marries Ginger, Gilligan marries uh, Marianne, and fucking Skipper Bravenshire doesn't get in any tail. <laughs> uh, there was an obvious, uh, the Skipper can't marry anybody. The skipper is married to the sea. <laughs> You are on the side of Lost and Dan Friesen. Give it up now, you guys! Yeah. You are on the side of Gilligan's Island and Derek Smith. Make it right now! What do you guys think of concept comedy shows in general? Uh, they're great. It just poses another challenge to comedians in another way to be funny. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you know your jokes. You know how to present them. Uh, but being put in a different situation, if you want to, you know, do a character or you know, write an assignment, yeah. it's sort of a, another way to approach comedy. Maybe you can use that as your jokes later. Oh, we've got more debates to go, you guys. Uh, 
Uh, for this next debate, I need to pull up Exhibit A and B real quick for you guys. This, this debate is about Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton. That's how he is, you guys. Uh, these are the two white guys who look alarmingly similar and have really close names. Uh, just so you know. Uh, but let's give it up for your two debaters. Uh, on the side of Bill Pullman, let's give it up for Mike Prinskoy, you guys. Yeah. On the side of Bill Paxton, let's give it up for Sonya Lee, you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Independence Day. I will not shit on Independence Day. I cannot shit on Independence Day. Thank you, person in the front. One person got to like shit. It was a good movie. It was a very... Will Smith killed it. Vivica Fox was still hot back then. She was hot back then. Take my word. As a black person, weirdest thing I've ever said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck else has Bill Pullman done? I will tell you. Uh, he also was in Scary Movie 4. 4? Of all the Scary Movie 4. The Wayne's brothers didn't want to be in Scary Movie 4. <laughs> uh, but I want to share a fun fact with you guys. Uh, we're going to go back. On uh, November 22nd, this is real, John F. Kennedy stepped outside of the Hotel Texas in Fort Worth. Four hours later, our president was gunned down by an assassin's bullet that morning. And there was a sea of people surrounding the hotel to see him, right? And in that crowd, I'm not making this up, this is on Wikipedia, there was a little eight-year-old Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton was beating presidents before Bill Pullman was pretending to be <laughs> But the sign made a lot of good points. Very persuasive. Uh, I actually kind of think that uh, Bill Paxson is better than Bill Pullman now. Sight! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's that JFK point, right? Now this is just a theory. But did an eight-year-old Bill Paxson murder the president of the United States? When I googled uh, Bill Paxson for this debate, do you know what came up? Did you mean Bill Pullman? <laughs> when I googled Bill Pullman, you know what came up? Great search, Mike! <laughs> Spaceballs, Independence Day, Cast for the Friendly Ghost, While You Were Sleeping, these are classics, okay? <laughs> what has Bill Paxton been in? Titanic? I've never even heard of that movie. <laughs> Let me take you guys to six hours ago, Mike Provinsboy's own Facebook page. Uh, <laughs> I'm recording this thing tonight, please come and watch me debate Bill Pullman versus Bill Paxton, blah, 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 blah. Lauren Kozlowski chimes in that Bill Paxton is greater, 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 Bill Pullman. <laughs> blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No, read it. She says... <laughs> oh, I'll read it. I'll read it. But I want you to say how this ends. With Babinskoy saying, I don't actually hate Bill Paxton. Oh! <laughs> I've got to prepare, though. And then she says, did Bill Paxton personally insult you? <laughs> Babinskoy says, um, he's probably a good guy. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like him. He's, he's all right. 
This is the thing. Bill Pullman is the underdog, okay? He's the Cinderella, the long shot, the dark horse. He's the other man. He's you. He's me. He's the school teacher. That wakes up at 3 a.m. every day to teach calculus to her fourth graders. All of whom are orphans. You can try to keep Bill Pullman down. I'll end on this. You know, you can, you can try to keep him in a corner. You can try to murder him with a fleet of alien spaceships. But you know what? You know what he's not going to do? He's not going to go quietly into the night. He will not vanish without a fight. He's going to live on. He's going to survive. Today, we celebrate our... I was going to say our favorite actor, Bill Pullman. <laughs>
Here are the last titles. Uh, on two from advertising, Maggie is the mega is the metric prefix for millions, so the mega millions lottery should pay trillions of dollars. Two. <laughs> None of us reflect on how modern civilization pivots on the discoveries of just a few intellectually restless people. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for proving that I'm funny, Adam. I really appreciate it. I don't remember, okay, I don't remember uh, I'm tweeting Jew, okay? That, I think I was trying to Google it, maybe. Uh, I don't know what it you go to a smart college, you go to a smart Harvard college because you're smart, you got a good job. Some people, robots can take over our jobs. Uh, I've never heard of a robot lawyer. That'd be a pretty, be a pretty cool TNT show. <laughs> you are guilty as you must be recharged. <laughs> fucking dumb people, you know how shitty the world would be like if mostly dumb people ran this country? Which I think already do, am I right? <laughs> if legitimately dumb people actually ran this country, our national anthem would be the theme song for two and a half men, okay? <laughs> that sounds pretty fucking awful. Alright guys, that's my debate. Hey! 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 Close this out. Let's give it up for Adam Burke, you guys. Maestro. <laughs> As many of you here may know, about 100 years ago, George Bernard Shaw put on a show. <laughs> Paul Pygmalion, also known as My Fair Lady. AKA, she's all that. <laughs> Rachel Lee Cook? That's the one, yes. <laughs> now, of course, the play begins. The main professor named Higgins who instructs Eliza in many things, particularly her intellect, her wherewithal, her reasoning, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> but what I would like. Sorry, one more time. Here we go again. One, two, three, four. But with this here dizzy that I rehearsed, I'd like to propose the exact reverse, that intellect is in fact a curse and should be done away with. Out of humanity's many lapses, and in our constantly firing synapses that causes all these nations to collapse, what I'm trying to say is, be stupid, be stupid. Be a dollar, be an O. Take a dummy, be a dummy, and stop using your load. Imbecile has mass appeal because you make everybody feel like they are so much better than you. <laughs> Genius is overrated, it's way more chic to be adulterated. Being stupid is the smartest thing you'll do. <laughs> is there anything more loathsome than to strain your brain's corpus callosum just to prove that you know some piece of information? In every state from A to Z, the children ride in misery. Because their government's degree, they get an education. Science <laughs> is so informing that all that study and brainstorming has brought us north to global warning and an environment in pieces. While countries toil in poverty, manufacturing the latest gadgetry, because of some chap's ingenuity. Look, this is my thesis. Be stupid, be stupid, be a dipmal ignoramus. The real Cretan can't be beaten, it might even make you famous. Renounce your master's degree at once, it's more of a blast to be a dunce. Help me in my wit, you see it's true. Help me in my witless endeavor to make the world a bit less clever. Being stupid is the smartest thing you'll do. If everyone would be more dumb, we'd all have a lot less to fear from. The coming techno-apocalypse at the hands of sentient microchips, and then we could prevent it. We would stop being so damned inventive. The 
world needs more mental dogs. In other words, more body body. Yeah. It's time to self lobotomize. Please follow my example. Carve out your hypothalamus with a scalpel. And be a stupid fucking cunt like me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>